Secretary Desmond Albright, members of your family, Senator Helm, Senator Mikulski, uh, Congressman Hamilton here, I'm not sure. Under Secretary Tarnoff, uh, I'm very pleased to preside <coughs> to preside at uh, Madeleine Albright's uh, swearing in today. I thank uh, the Senate for its swift and unanimous approval of her nomination. That reflects the confidence that all of us have in this remarkable American. It also sends a strong signal of the Senate's willingness to work with us to fashion a constructive and bipartisan foreign policy to advance the national interest of America. This is a time of great hope and opportunity. If we are going to realize its promise, we must recognize that our global leadership is essential. In the next century, no less <clears throat> than this one, America must continue to be the world's greatest force for peace and freedom and prosperity. Madeleine Albright has the strength and wisdom to help ensure that America remains the indispensable nation. Arriving on our shores as a refugee from tyranny and oppression, she worked her way up with determination and character to attain our nation's highest diplomatic office. She knows from her life's experience that freedom has its price and democracy its rewards. Her story is the best of America's story, told with courage, compassion, and conviction. As our UN ambassador these last four years, she has stood unflinchingly for America's interests and values. Now as our Secretary of State, she will help lead the effort to build a world where America makes the most of its partnerships with friends and allies around the world, where America leads the fight for a world that is safer from weapons of terror and mass destruction, where America leads the fight for a world that is safer from organized crime, drug, drug trafficking, and all terrorist activity, and where expanded trade brings growth and opportunity, where peace and freedom know no frontiers. Just as I have benefited time and again from her counsel and her judgment, the American people will benefit from her leadership and her ability to speak to them about the importance of our being strong abroad in order to have a strong, good life here at home. On their behalf, I ask now that the Vice President uh, swear Madeleine Albright into her new office. If you would stand on this side and your daughter's uh I'll begin by saying I state your name. Okay. Right. I state your name. I, Madeline Corbell Albright. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies against all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith, that I will bear true faith, and allegiance to the same, allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely, without any, any mental reservation, without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office, discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter, on which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Madam Secretary. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, thank you. I will do all I can to validate your trust and that of the United States Senate. Because of your leadership and the courage and productivity of our people, I will begin my service as Secretary of State with the wind at my back. America is strong, our principles are ascendant, and our leadership both respected and welcome in most corners of the world. But if we are complacent or timid or unwilling to look beyond our borders, our citizens will not prosper 
and the framework of American leadership and the foundation of American security we have built could crumble with 21st century speed. We cannot allow that to happen. We must not shy from the mantle of leadership, nor hesitate to defend our interests, nor fail in our commitments, nor diverge from the principles that have defined, elevated, and sustained our nation for more than 200 years. Like those who came before us, we must be builders and leaders. We must heed the President's call to place patriotism above partisanship. We must formulate and finance a world-class diplomacy to complement our world-class military. And we must explain our policies and priorities to the American people with a logic they can embrace and a reasoning they can relate to their own lives. My life reflects both the turbulence of Europe in the middle of this century and the tolerance and generosity of America throughout its existence. As I stand here today in this office, which symbolizes the power and purpose of the United States, I think especially of five people. My mother and father, who taught me to love freedom. President Václav Havel, who helped me to understand the responsibilities of freedom. And Edmund Muskie, who gave me the confidence to know that no barrier or ceiling should stop me from serving freedom in my own life. And someone I did not know, Thomas Jefferson, who, as our first Secretary of State, set the right diplomatic course for this great nation. Mr. President, you have stated as your goal that America should remain the world's strongest force for peace, liberty, prosperity, and security so that we can build a future for the next generation free from the worries and plagues of the past. This is an ambitious task, but we are an ambitious and determined people. With your leadership, our people's optimism, and God's help, let us proceed. Thank you very much. To go over to the State Department and tell them all that we have a very important job to do with the hard work of our Foreign Service and Civil Service who works in the State Department, and then I will plan uh, the next steps. But my first goal is really to go and work with the excellent people that have provided the backbone of America's diplomatic service. Made history. How else do you intend to differ from your predecessor? <laughs> I am uh, basically interested in serving the President of the United States and the people of the United States as best I can. I'm very proud to be an American, and I hope very much that the American people will be proud of me as I perform the service for the United States. Thank you. I think we uh, are going to meet with the new Secretary General. I'm very pleased, actually, that his the first uh, official trip, uh, that or the first visit here that the President is going to have after his inauguration is with the United Nations Secretary General. Uh, my first official act will be uh, to meet with the President and the new Secretary General uh, in, a, in a little while. And I think that is a very good sign of the support uh, that the United States uh, is going to give to the United Nations. And as the Vice President said last night, we are committed to the United Nations. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.